Hello, welcome to another book report. This time we've got uh, Reality is Not What It Seems. I can't actually read the subtitle. By Carlo Rovelli. Uh, the Journey to Quantum Gravity. So, um, I honestly wouldn't, unless you're really interested in uh, modern physics, um, I would not really recommend this book. I mean, it's well written. It's very interesting. I read the whole thing, but I love physics, right? I read, I've, I've read at this point probably hundreds of books on physics. I've studied it. Uh, I've done a lot of math around it. So, um, you know, I wouldn't call my, I'm not a physicist by any stretch, but it's one of my favorite subjects as a, as a uh, journeyman. Um, and so, you know, I enjoyed the book, but I really wouldn't recommend it unless you uh, either want to learn about physics in general or uh, um, a uh, uh, currently minority uh, field, subfield of physics uh, that is studying quantum gravity. Although, um, based on what I've read, I think quantum gravity is heads and shoulders above string theory or a few other very... Well, I think string theory is losing popularity now, but um, anyway, I, I, I am attracted to quantum gravity, although I do have a few quibbles with a few things in here. Um, uh, but, you know, I'm not enough of an expert to really talk about it here, so I will just share some stuff that I enjoyed. So one was... Um, uh, what he calls the uh, extended now. Uh, so uh, it's hard to, it's like a mirror. Um, so uh, the extended present. So um, the structure of space time for every observer, the extended present is the intermediate zone between the past and the future, right? Most people think this way. Um, but really, in terms of uh, modern physics, the best explanation we have now is that there is this sort of indeterminate zone where, uh, and the further away from you you get, uh, the bigger that indeterminate zone is. And, um, you know, it's something that's in the equations, but it's really not, uh, uh, it's not something I really took to heart in a, in a deeper way until, until I read his explanation of it in here. So I really enjoyed that. Um, another one I like is, uh, and, and part of what attracts me to um, quantum gravity uh, is, I, I mean, I years ago, I really re rejected the idea of particles at all. I, I, I really don't think there are any particles fundamentally. I mean, I think um, in, in practice at the macro level, you can, you can describe things as if there are particles, but I don't think there are actually particles. I think, I think you have uh, emergent properties of fields that sometimes act like particles. And, um, and uh, that's what I really liked about uh, this book is is how he kind of gives a history of everything. Hopefully this will, it's not really clearing up. There we go. And so, um, you know, at Newton's, at Newton's time, we had space, time, and particles. Uh, Faraday, Maxwell, um, split up particles into fields and particles. Uh, Einstein merged uh, space and time into space time. And then later uh, with uh, general re uh, special relativity um, actually combined uh, fields and space time. So uh, by the early 20th century, we just had fields and particles. And then uh, quantum mechanics, which really did coalesce also in the early 20th century, um, got rid of particles, right? So we just have space-time and quantum fields. And then with quantum gravity, 
uh, it's actually merging space-time with quantum fields, and we just have covariant quantum fields uh, as the, the, the base substrate of physical reality. Um, I would argue that there are substrates below that as well, but I think it will take a lot of research and a lot of good explanations and a lot of experimentation uh, to get to that point. Um, my intuition is that the most fundamental layer of physical reality is a consciousness field and that the covariant um, uh, quantum fields uh, emerge from that. But um, uh, humans are a long way <laughs> from getting to that sort of understanding scientifically, I believe. Um, uh, but anyway, I really enjoyed this chart. You know, uh, pieces of it I was aware of, but I, I love the way um, Carlo Rovelli um, spells it out and explains it. Um, uh, so, so really, th 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 this could be a great book in, as an introduction to modern physics, because he does start from uh, Newton, and even before Newton, actually, and uh, goes all the way up to the present. And he's very careful about, you know, what's, uh, what's really well-supported, um, you know, best explanation we have now. Uh, not that it won't get better, not that it's 100% correct, but uh, he makes a distinction between, um, you know, the best quantum theories and the best uh, 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 general and specific relativity theories, uh, versions of those theories versus um, quantum gravity, which is much more speculative. Although um, he does talk about some, uh, uh, some testable and falsifiable aspects of the theory, which make it infinitely superior to string theory right there. You know, if you can't test it, it's not a real theory in my book. It's not a real explanation. Um, anyway, it's interesting. Um, uh, uh, I think one of, uh, and so I'm, 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 I am really attracted to quantum gravity as a, as a concept and um, some of the ramifications, which include the idea that uh, 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 the Planck distance and Planck time are the smallest units of time and distance, which I think are the same thing, actually. Um, uh, so that basically he, uh, quantum gravity argues that reality is uh, discrete, meaning uh, you can't split up time and space uh, into infinitely smaller pieces. There's actually the smallest piece of space and time, uh, a, the smallest quanta. Right, and that I think I agree with um, intuitively. Um, although I disagree, he he uh, he wants to treat time as distinct from space, and I think I think time just is space. Time is space, just like up, down, left, right. It's just another bit of distance in a dimension that we don't interact with in the same way as up, down, left, right. Um, but it's basically just distance. I, I don't see time as anything special um, uh, or, 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 or any different from uh, the three dimensions that we, that we experience um, uh, the way we do. Um, and uh, the other thing is, is he's, he's obsessed with getting rid of infinities. Um, I, I think infinite sets and uh, concepts of infinities are... They're in the math. <laughs> I think they're. I think they're in modern physics, and you just have to accept them. Um, uh, they also uh, help uh, with the explana explanatory power, uh, particularly with quantum physics. Uh, if you if you try to eliminate infinite sets from quantum physics, certain things are just inexplicable, and um, and I and I think. Uh, I think the empirical evidence is there that, uh, you know, we just have to accept certain aspects of reality are infinite and he doesn't like it. <laughs> and he bends over backwards to, uh, uh, to avoid infinity. So, um, but anyway, 
very well written, very enjoyable, and a great introduction to quantum gravity, which I enjoyed very much. Um, so yeah, good good book for anybody that's into physics. Thanks. Have a good one.